Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the Lessons of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalever, and right now, we have an election year. But if you'd like to read about the state of the district, please go right ahead, pause the video, and read it if you'd like to. Of course, the Marshal's Legacy lives in his hands. Now, I've technically done this already once, but I've played as Pavel Batov, as you can see on screen with that thumbnail. Um, but now we're going to go back and play as a certain Mr. Yeltsin. So for now, right now, while we're led by Batov, or Bata. Um, we, as much as I love the UKGS, we've done that before. So we probably want to support the LPR for this one. Cool. So we have quite a bit of PP, and which minority voting, huh? And minority states, Arctic Circle. Well, let's see. The LPR we want to win. Strong, moderate. They lead. Moderate, significant. Overpowering, huh? Strong, weak, very strong. Maybe let's do Western Siberia first. We'll try that one out. Minority voting. Um, sure, why not? We'll try that out too. I don't know how well we're going to do here, but we have to deal with some Black League remnants as well. Oh, and we stuff here too. What do we want? Anything here? Uh, I like the free infrastructure. But it's not really free since it costs us PP anyway, so let's see the rest of our PP. And let's come over here and do Fledging and Democratic Institutions. Because we need the LPR, correct? Yes, we do. Preparing the apparatuses of government for a transition into democracy is no easy task. Not only does one have to alter the functions of previous bureaucracies and departments and their respective systems of appointments, but also one has to create entirely new institutions in order to accommodate this new form of government. These are institutions like a national congress and an independent judiciary. Responsibilities and functions previously handled by the military have to be divorced from the executive and redistributed amongst those institutions. It's hard work setting up a new government, but ultimately it's worth it. Remove no voting, get more political power, lose stability, and get some more support for a conservative democracy as we're training our soldiers against the Komiites, I guess we'll say. Bashkiria still exists. And we eventually will need to get the EuroLeague and Orenburg under us, but we will have to wait and see what happens. Spend... Uh, we can spend a little bit more for now. It's fine with us. We want to make sure that we're doing quite well. Pulling update. If you like it about that, please go right ahead. Bingo, bongo, ding a dongo. Thank you very much. All right. Let's see what happens. Anything else yet? Nope. We can't change anything else, which kind of sucks. But the LPR is kind of weak in a lot of states. But it won't be so weak once we get the fledgling democratic institutions finito. Which is okay with us. Oh, we got some uh, despotism. Semyon Lazarev. Oh, there goes Bashkiria. Uh, Ultranationalist, Azarov, ah, and Oleg, very good, and Liberal Democracy, too. But what do we have? Decide in the future. I think I've already read this one before, so if you like to read this, so a lot of these I've read before uh, when I play as Batov or Pavel, so I'll probably let you read these. I'm not going to read them, but if you would like to read them, you can go right ahead, so. Cool. Decide in the future, which I'm pretty sure I read last time, so. Yep. Soldiers sit in the barracks in groups, patiently waiting for the captain's return from the high command and bring them the news. Oh, boy. And the IRA steps down. All right. And weak, 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 weak. Overpowering, that's not bad. Um, what are they doing? They are doing something somewhere. Trans-Euro really looks like we could use some more support. Or Western Siberia. Let's do Trans-Euro this time. Let's see what happens. Oh, and there they go. As we're still training our soldiers, Soviet Federation of Western Russia unifies the West Russians. Ah, socialism has been reborn under Mr. Chubby Cheeks Zidanov. Ah, if you like to about better agricultural methods, please go right ahead. For this bread we thank thee. Absolutely. What can we do here? Hunt down bandits? That's probably a good idea. Try of Yazov, yes please. Let's get rid of him as fast as possible. And that'll be nice. Pulling, alright. And now we have no PP, because we're still no well significant, significant, moderate, moderate, moderate. Irrelevant, very weak, very strong, significant, strong, not too bad, even though we could use more PPA as well. And there goes Onega. Alright, the 66 election results. Um, I think, uh, I think you have our, our this one as well, so if you'd like to do this one, please go right ahead. And victory for democracy! The election results are in. And Yeltsin and the Democrats have secured victory with a large majority in elections. It appears the people have spoken, and the military junta will soon be on its way out. Military control over government buildings is already beginning to decline as a civilian government replaces military control. Martial law is also being ended across the Ural district as the military relaxes its authority. Although as a civilian government replaces a military one, a whole lot will change. More civilian-style government will no doubt shift the focus towards civilian issues, however. The military will still remain powerful and influential in the government. Democratization will continue whether the military likes it or not, though, and more freedoms will become within reach of every person in the Urals. Yeltsin has many plans for the Urals in Russia, whether he sees them through remains to be seen. Congratulations, President Yeltsin! Very nice. Now, I assume with this part of the focus tree, um, we get to see Victory for Democracy, which is good. And we actually start doing this stuff. Oh, okay, so we, I've read through these bones before. This one seems maybe a little bit different, actually. 
and this one's still the same, so I've read all those before, but let's go with a victory for democracy. West Siberia has not known the light of liberty for quite some time, ruled first by Lazar Kaganovich's fanatic commies. The region quickly dissolved into three-way tensions between them, the Black League's extreme revanchists, and our own state, which is, has its own sorrowful history of authoritarianism. The difference, of course, is that our own regime has been controlling more out of necessity than ideology. Now that the Euros are peaceful at last, there's no need for such a tight hand. Marshal Batov has decided to begin the handover of power to a civilian government with trusted politician Boris Yeltsin at the head of the West Siberian Republic. He has a reputation for an advocacy of economic reform, and the region can expect a loosening of political and market restrictions alike under his reign. Ah, uh, Boris, Mr. Handsome Boris, please don't kill the country, but we'll do the best we can together. Together we shall fight, and we're nice and blue. I love blue, that looks so nice. I'll, that's just my favorite color, I'm sorry. Blue is just, it gives me, oh, whoa, in, uh, or, uh, oh, never mind, um, it gets me all hot and bothered, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah, who's gonna, oh, whoa, oh, Yeltsin? <laughs> That's a really nice flag, though. That's really cool. Other trial, Dmitry Yazov. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. Our monster finally put down. Very good. And let's see what happened. So 1 to 15, 0 to 1, 0 1, 1 to 0, 10, 0, 5. 1 to 26, 25. Oh, that was, was well, they barely won there. Uh, 0, 5, 0, 5, 5, 29, 0, 1, 0, 2. Wow. Okay, so when I played as, um, Pavel Batov, Batov, um, we went like double the LPR score, but now we are literally triple their score. Wow, that's impressive. Cool. Polling is done. Dealing with the remaining... Uh, let's lose more PP first. Let's try that one out. Reunification, we don't need that one for now, because it's not here. But then we'll do begin privatization. Ah, uh, yes, he helps in Mr. Privatization. Income rate goes up. Sort of. Yeah, by a lot. Could find the Constitution. Meet with Marshall. Uh, which one do we want to do first? I don't want to lose political power. I don't like free press. What? I want to go back. Uh, begin privatization. The military regime has a tendency of centralizing economic as well as political power around itself, nationalizing a number of key economic sectors, although it never went as far as the communists who preceded it. The result, a number of bloated, inefficient public enterprises, unable to adequately reform or make a profit, although these may have been necessary during wartime periods. They will not suffice for the future economic growth. Reforms are in order as we go ahead and click on some of this. Thank you very much. Privatiz privatizing and splitting up these behemoths will promote healthy competition and ultimately a more prosperous society. Creative potential is brimming beneath the surface and the Altic to ensure a better society is allowing West Siberia's more entrepreneurial citizens the chance to unleash them. We lose political powers to build a construction speed factory Alpa dockyard up for way more money. And we'll go to flag taxes. We lose political powers to build it, but we get way more money. The inauguration. The crowds were silent at first as the banners were raised and the trumpets blared, then the din came. It started off small as the troops stood to attention, and the members of Yeltsin's selected cabinet came to the podium. It rose as Pavel Batov entered, entered and took a seat on the front, then finally it roared as Boris Yeltsin, the first president of the Republic, came into view. With his right hand on his heart, the president stood there with the anthem motionlessly, silent as a mouse as the patriotic songs blared and the crowd's roar continued before he finally approached the microphone. Dearest friends, he began with a smile, today is an auspicious day not just for our newly founded republic, but for democracy itself. We have come from humble and heroic beginnings to this moment. Let us not forget the heroics or deeds of the past, but let us also look to a brave new future. Hours passed with the president bringing up some men and women. Soldiers honored for bravery, experts in multiple fields of governance, and a few personal friends or rich individuals. Thankfully, no one had any complaint to any of this, not even Batov for the time. Though there were some rumors and rumblings, some, some partisans across West Siberia, that could be handled later. Right now, it's time to prepare for the people of West Siberia to celebrate. Freedom is our top priority. Alright, let's see what happens when we privatize everything. Hmm, don't need to do that stuff over there. We don't need to see this one either. What can we do here? Oh, we can campaign still. Well, we're not we're not campaigning anymore, so. Ensure regional Soviet autonomy? Ah, oh, if you'd like to read about the end of election season, please go right ahead. One holdover from the communist administration is the presence of regional authorities that ultimately have very little say in running their locales. Ensuring autonomy for lower levels of government was brushed aside by the military, which felt as though it had greater concerns. A division of authority is an important step in the establishment of democracy, letting the central government have everything is a surefire way to get tyranny. Oh boy, if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. The Third Army exists to protect the people and not rob them. Good. President Yeltsin has therefore decided to invest a significant degree of power over taxation, spending, and a wide variety of other duties to the regional Soviets, ensuring that the people have a greater degree of representation than the era where Svedlovsk bureaucrats made all the decisions. An empowered populace is a happy one, and nothing satisfies the masses like self-determination. More stability, more cap, less output, better monthly poverty change as well as industrial expertise, as well as some more stability. State-controlled unions with non-socialist unions allowed. Not bad. And there goes free Indonesia. And let's remain, or deal with these guys. Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh, Moscow. We definitely got to work with those guys. Oh, Volgastadt. I'd love to see if Volga Show would have any content someday. Oh, and you know what? You know what we love doing? Spending more money. Spend more money. Because we want to get this economy just cranking hard. And Sukarno wins the Indonesian Civil War. Moving to a civilian administration. Yes, please. Oh, we can't do that one yet. Let's do codify the Constitution. Up until now, the government is ruled largely by decree. Matters of law and policy were largely the decision of Marshal Batov. And although he was by no means a cruel ruler, this meant that decisions were ar largely arbitrary and sometimes not in the best interest of the people. If you'd like to read about this, please go ahead. A government needs to have an agreed upon set of rules in order to avoid becoming one that rules solely through the imposition of force, and this is exactly what President Yeltsin insists on doing. The new constitution of the West Siberian Republic will include protections of the basic vital freedoms of speech, expression, and religion, and assembly. It will create defined roles for different sections of the government and clarify the relationship between the local and federal governments, although we may not realize its benefits immediately. This document is the foundation of a democracy that will someday incorporate the entire country. On the trial. Very good. So how are we doing with money then, right now? How does all that taxation work? It doesn't, does it? It does sometimes. Oh, well, we didn't really change very much here, I guess. Well, let's see. Close that out. Three billion? Nothing really changed for us, so... I don't know. Whatever. Hmm. <laughs> it is 1966, so I hope you're having a great, fabulous year. Let's improve our guns first. Because I have a feeling we're probably going to have a toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Soviet Federation of West Russia, so... Great. Followed up with... Oh, what is this? So checks and balances would be nice. Uh, let's do this one first. Free the press. I don't want to do that one. Oh, that hurts our peepee. -pee. We only get oh, 0.27 every single day. Holy crap. No free nation can function without a free press. A press or the fourth is state, a fundamental part of democracy. The press acts as a watchdog, exposing corrupt politicians and bureaucrats alike in years past. The press was kept silent in an attempt to keep up morale during difficult times and maintain the stability of the government. What wasn't understood, however, was that such policy and regulation of the media only further destabilized the government and weakened our nation by allowing the corrupt and unjust to reign. Now the time for censorship has come and gone. Now is the time for an era of free press. If you like Rubat, Mr. Kaganovich, please go right ahead, but the revolution ended or delayed. Send him to his cell. And make sure he gets no desserts when he's in there. Just saying. He probably doesn't deserve any. But you never know. Ah. Free the press. Moving to civilian administration. President Yeltsin's reforms have already affected much of West Siberian society, but they still have taken place under the military regime. It is not enough to change the highest authority in the system in order to have a proper government. Civilian authorities need to be empowered every rank of the government. Otherwise, the conflicts of interest between the military and the nation could very well lead to corruption and a renewed despotism. Generals currently serving in government posts will be dismissed and replaced by qualified civilian candidates. Active military members will no longer fill what should be at elected positions. These measures may be dramatic, but they are the only way to ensure that the new government does not evolve into a junta with a thin democratic Democratic veneer. Oh, this looks so bad. Jesus Christ, this looks so bad. My, 0.28. Oh, God, that's so... Uh. As you can tell, I don't like having just 0.28 political power every single day. That is... That does not make me feel good, man. But meet with the Marshal. The changing of the guard has generated a lot of great deal of con consternation within some elements of society. Military officials question the wisdom of opening up society in turbulent times and express skepticism that economic privatization will do other anything other than enrich a few profiteers rather than bolster the national interest. A showdown between Yeltsin's reformers and the military will be disastrous for the Republic. It is for this reason that the current president and former president will be meeting to smooth over these differences. Batov and Yeltsin can be expected to discuss matters of the economy, democratization, and the army's role in the new government, with the goal of reaching a compromise satisfactory to all parties. Although hardliners on both sides may grumble at the conclusion reached, all can agree that dialogue is a vastly more preferred method than bloodshed for resolving our disagreements. Absolutely. We have already have enough blood spilled between in this region here, between our you know various groups in the past. We need to be united for the future, whether we like it or not. And then free the parties. Or, or do this one. I'll do this one first. With democracy secured in the nation. We got, my apologies. Let me do this one first. My bad. There we go. With democracy secured in the nation, it is time to open up the political scene to allow for political parties to arise once more. New and varied political parties are vital for the continuation or the continued success of democracy in the nation. If the people haven't haven't had parties with which they can identify and express their political opinions, then what use is a democracy at all? It will simply be a representation of the elite who control the largest parties. In any event, this occasion is to be a momentous moment in our history. Long live the Republic and spend more money. We have two full lines going. Someday, hopefully, it'll get better and better and better. Hey, image equipment, nice. Um, even better ones? Yes, please. Very good. Uh, 
and ensure army representation is next. Behind closed doors, a meeting, despite it, uh, its officiality and publicity, was actually quite private. The president posed for cameras outside the room, and after a few moments of impatiently waiting, the other men arrived. Marshal Boris Yeltsin greeted with a heavy, heavily photogenic but fake grin as Pavel Batov approached the door, seemingly ignorant or at least uncaring of the cameras flashing. The reporters eyeing the two men and their respective entourage filing him. Yeltsin. He replied with a stony expression and tone laden with steel before entering the room ahead of the president, a title which he had apparently forgotten to address. For a brief moment, Boris's expression faded as he took a step to the door, gave a wave to the cameras, and slowly closed it right now to get this over with. As discussed earlier, he began as he moved to the table and sat before continuing. The army will be allowed some representation in the government, however. Should it be found that the army is interfering in the democratic processes? If anything, the army would only act against tyrannical abuses of power. Pavel interrupted, his eyes set on the president's own, defined tyrannical. What followed was something unseen to the crowds outside. Fingers were pointed, documents were looked over and reworded, and Boris and Pavel were at the very center. Finally, after hours of haggling and shouting, the amount of seats the armies would retain had been determined along with their status as silent watchdogs, a term which infuriated the president to no end. However, it was better to have an army pledging to defend democracy than one utterly opposed to it. Thus, the groups bid their goodbyes and stepped out of the room into the lighting of camera flashes. Boris's photogenic smile was tempered by the last thing he had heard the marshal say. We will be watching you. Yeltsin. And sure, army representation. The new government is thoroughly a civilian regime, but the army clearly needs some role. The president's discussion with Marshal Batov has illuminated the necessity of cooperation between the different sections of the state as well as West Siberia's transition into a democracy. Alienating the army is very dangerous. With some effort, it could be made into an ally of democracy rather than an opponent. The parliament of the Young Republic will always have some form of military representation in order to better ensure good relations between it and the elected government. These will serve as a bedrock of stability in settled institutions. If civilian rulers go off the rails, the military can step in to protect the system and national security. As the West Siberian Republic is still in danger of threats from within and without, the risk arrangement has great potential. And get more stability too. Followed up with checks and balances. No true democracy can consider itself as such without the implementation of a proper system of checks and balances. Checks and balances ensure that power is never centralized too much in the hands of one individual or group of individuals. Such is needed in our republic of the army. Despite having already transitioned formally into a new republic, the army still holds great sway in the nation's politics. We should work towards stripping away some of that power, perhaps coming to an agreement with the head of the military to make it so. Which probably is a good thing. It's always good to have checks and balances, right, German Reich? That's right. Cool. And what are we missing right now? I do want to make you guys 40 combo with, but we'll get there eventually. A shaky foundation. While the Republic is now a free and democratic governance, we still have many problems to deal with from the days of military rule, most notably of which is extremely low level of citizen participation in a democracy. Many of our citizens are either unaware or apathetic of their new democratic rights and responsibilities in a Republic. It's our responsibility to make sure they become informed about what they can and cannot do in our nation and become active voters willing to act on their behalf. Very good. One, two, some. We're going to need way more army XP. Batov is helping us out. The army exercises are doing what they can. Because our guys right now are only 20 combat with, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they're only 20 combat with. I did want to make their tanks even bigger, which is probably a mistake, actually. That's my fault. I should have done that earlier, but whatever. A shaky foundation. Followed up with... For a better tomorrow. Despite setbacks in our transition into democracy, we have every hope that we will soon become a fair and equitable society. Already, new political parties have formed and begun campaigning. Discussions about economics and political theory are happening amongst even ordinary citizens. And people are starting to have faith in a system that just over a year ago they couldn't even participate in. The Russian people are on the path of true freedom and democracy, and as long as we continue working together, there's nothing we won't be capable of. Very good. You may get some artillery too. Don't forget about that. And let's get ready to exert influence down here, because that'll be really, really good to do. If we can get them under us, that's just more factories, more soldiers, and more costs, but it's worth it in the end. And get lunch for two. More 100, 100 more political power? All right, not bad money-wise. Hey, it's less than 3 billion, so that's not too bad. One, two, some. Could be worse. Could be a whole lot worse. Keep boosting so we get some more PP. Even though we only get 0.25 every single day. That's pretty darn bad, not going to lie. Recon groups, the Taust. Ooh. Do we not have... Oh, no administration problems. Rebuilding the Republic. 
Our West Siberian Republic is in poor shape. Recent battles and wars we've had on our path to unification have destroyed much of our infrastructure and industry, the conquered regions being in the worst shape. This state of affairs, of course, hasn't been helped by the preceding decade of warlordism and Luftwaffe bombing. It's high time we begin focusing our political and economic efforts on rebuilding the nation or raising the standards of living nationwide. The infrastructure and industry is there, it's just a matter of repairing and renovating it. Lunch for two. A typical formal lunch between with the president was usually a full arrangement of his closest friends and advisors, all discussing current events or discussing topics ranging from books to hunting. Today, however, was not a typical formal luncheon. The room was almost entirely empty if not for two people within it, both discussing a small problem. Namely, Yevgeny Primakov's old ties to the All-Russian Black League, Evgeny Pit Pitovranov, the man's former mentor and before the two had cut ties became a leading member of Dmitry Yazov's administration. Even with the Black League now dead and gone, the potential for scandals did not end with Yazov or Petronov's deaths. Exactly how many people do you think No, Boris asked as he eyed Yevgeny with external expression. We can't afford to let anyone capitalize on this, even if you had cut ties. Do not worry, it'll be covered up, Primakov replied as Boris gave a gruff nod. I certainly hope so, otherwise both you and I will be on the streets of Bass. At worst, he didn't need to finish his sentence. Neither of the two did. Okay, okay, well, we don't talk about that here. Improve society, please. As much as possible. God, I hope we can get some more PP. This is so bad. Oh, who likes a free press? There we go. Give it a day, and we're going to begin influencing people here. The rest for your rolls, if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Boom, boom. We could launch an invasion, but we're okay. More investment, please. Does it actually cost PP? It doesn't really cost anything for us, which is actually really good. Boom, 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 boom. And do we get any higher levels? No, we do not. That's fine. And taking inventory. I think I've already, maybe I already read this stuff before. Expanding the Bureau allows strikes towards a market economy. Um, yeah, I think I read this one. So if you want to read this one, please go right ahead. I'm pretty sure I've read this one before. So I think I read this one as well. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. I don't think I read this one. Allow strikes. I don't think that was allowed under Bata. But if you want to read about taking inventory, please, please, please go right ahead. Cool. And there we go. Alright, foreign structures, poverty relief, state welfare, nah, preparing for reconstruction. Um, let's do this one first. Our unification of West Siberia is a costly. Factories, roads, and railways are all heavily damaged or destroyed in the fighting. With our enemies dealt with and internal issues handled, we can finally make preparations to rebuild. The damage is not spare, and with cities destroyed and people starving, our economies in shambles barely functioning and unemployment abound. Schools also lay abandoned with no, circle, no funding for education. Bartering is rampant with no real money circulating through the country. To prepare for the rebuilding of the district, Boris Yeltsin has ordered for new construction jobs to begin all across West Siberia. Rebuilding the core of our cities will let us increase our reconstruction efforts even more, hopefully, by this end. West Siberia will radically look different and will begin a close recovery, hopefully. Allow strikes. The ability to strike is fundamental to democracy and workers' rights. When given the chance, a corporation will inevitably abuse workers' rights. Allowing our citizens to be able to strike will give them the ability to negotiate collectively for better wages and working conditions. Not only does this benefit the workers, but the economy as a whole as well. The more wealth goes back to the citizenry, the more money will be spent by the citizenry on goods and products. Arguably, the ability to strike is also right. As it falls under freedom of expression, in any case, we must begin loosening restrictions on strikers and even remove them entirely, if possible. Strikers' rights. Oh, went down. Oh my god. Oh. This sucks. We're on early mobilization. It hurts us too. Who is in this cabinet? You. Oh god. Minus 0 0.2 daily political power. Consumer goods looks better as well as construction speed, but is that really worth it? <laughs> I just want to get poverty to be better for us. Please. Please. You know what, screw it, we're gonna get that one first. There we go. Alright. Now it's a lot of strikes. Towards a market economy, that's not bad. Get more. Uh, uh. That's why more cost, but helps pop poverty, more efficient social safety net. Oh, well, let's see. If you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Yeah, this is, I think, what I've read this one before. Yeah, I've read this one before, so. As the situation in the economy in Russia is stabilized, our government has found itself with more resources to spare. Plenty of proposals have been made about such where such resources should go, but recently convincing arguments have been made in favor of improving our social safety net for the elderly and unemployed. After all, should we not respect our elders, those who fought in the Second World War and West Russian War? Those who sacrificed so much for their homeland, furthermore, the unemployed and destitute. We've all experienced what extreme poverty has felt like these two past decades. If nothing, should have given us some sort of empathy for those who have lost everything. We must provide more for our people. Oh, the GDP cost is going to go way up. But I guess it is what it is. 
How are we doing with this stuff up here? Uh, can we increase investments? Increase relations, yes. Increase investment, increase relations. We can't do that one just yet. Increase relations. It's always good to have good relations with people. Usually, at least. Towards a market economy. For decades, the Russian economy has been oriented almost entirely towards warfare and the production of weapons of war. Factories put not out of toasters, but rifles, artillery, tanks, planes, and every kind of explosive under the sun. However, as our state rapidly approaches full unification of the Russian states, we can begin to shift our focus towards a more normal market economy. An economy where people build devices to increase quality of life rather than destructive potential. An economy where economic growth puts more money in the people's pockets rather than rifles in soldiers' hands. An economy for people at peace rather than one constantly at war. Sounds like a pretty good idea. Increase relations, increase relations. We're still at four, which is totally okay. And now we're at three point. Oh, now we're at three, huh? Yeah, our GDP is at six point. Oh, six point nine now. Keep spending for now. Now it's four point six four. God dang it! All right, and then establish a Gazprom energy company. Siberia is among. Uh, was among the most resource-rich regions on Earth. Not only are there abundant veins of valuable ores and minerals, but also the area is home to some of the most deepest reservoirs of oil on the planet. The only thing stopping us from accessing those minerals and resources in years past was capital. And I do apologize. Let me go and grab this real quick. Thank you. Now, however, with a rapidly recovering economy, our state has found itself with more financial resources with which to invest. Given a nation's growing appetite for energy in the form of oil, it only makes sense that we exploit the rich Siberian lands that we have at our disposal. Hence, our new state energy corporation, the Gazprom Energy Company. Anything else here? What's, what's the fifth one? Decrease investment of other people? That's fine. So, receptive, aligned. These guys, oh, they're aligned. And they're, our current is high. They're aligned. Oh. Well, that's not good. Um, current influence gain is 0.6. Why is it so low? We'll get to 100. That'd be really good. They might get one. We might get one. So we'll see what happens. So with the Euro League, uh, if you want to read about this one, please go right ahead. Uh, as we, if you want to read about this one, please go right ahead as well, because we'll probably probably do this one first. We get way more construction speed, so that'll be good. <clears throat> build, build, build. 99. There we go. Alright, so add them to our sphere. That'll be good. And hopefully we can get these guys on our side as well, but you never know. Uh, oh, I'd like to integrate them. We need more influence here. So they're in our sphere. They're aligned, which is not good for us. What happens if we will discredit the opponent here? That's probably not good, but whatever. All right, let's do increase construction efforts. Four point zero six, not great, but it is what it is. And Africa has fallen apart. Ah, Africa, nothing like Africa. Cool, Africa died. Oh well, oh, I forgot to do this stuff too. Okay, well I'll do that one too. Why not? We'll do one. We'll do one for now. So we get point six. It seems like they lowered our influence. Point uh, goes up by point six five and a half ish. Oh, we're receptive. Oh, they're fighting each other too. Discredit opponents. Decrease investment in the Euro League. Huh. They're probably going to go with them. So Orenburg goes with them. We get the Euro League, which kind of sucks. Inside propaganda programs. Now we're kind of okay. We can only get point two eight, which is not very great. But, uh, let's see. If you want to read about this, please go ahead. The civilian industry. I'm pretty sure I've, I'm pretty sure I already read all these before, so. If you like to read them, please go right ahead. But there we go. Integrate them good. Wait, why is it neutral now? We need more influence. Okay, so I'm, I, I really want Kelsey Don up here. I really wanted to see him die. Let's get the Euro League at least under us first. Yeah, they, they lowered our influence and such here, so. So there's... there's that's why we can't do anything here. Screw the AI, man. Oh, here we go. Construction. Development subsidies. Propaganda. Yeah, we need more PP. But please, at least let's integrate one of these guys here. But if you'd like to read about the defense industry, please go right ahead. 
I don't want to super good yet, but we'll probably do best and, best and brightest first. Which would be nice. Alright, anything else? Do we get them yet? No? Increase relations? Yes. I would like to do this still, but we'll see. Come on, do we integrate them or no? I love the Adam to our sphere. Hey, if you want to do both that, please go right ahead. Great. That's actually really good. Oh, crap, we have to core them, though, too, now. Oh, no. 200,000, this is, this is better to core first. Mag. Wait, actually, how many divisions we got here? Please close out of the budget thing. We don't need to see that for a while. Uh, convert all to infantry for now. That's fine. There you go. I might just have you guys just like this. Alright, budget boost. Keep boosting it up. We need more PP as much as possible. Uh, we might just launch a military intervention, but let's get some more PP first. I think that'd be good so we get some more core stuff done. Too bad for society. Keep building, building, building. The best and brightest. Expand the bureau. If you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Uh, let's finish off these. Oh boy, I'm a, I don't want to look at these guys. Goodbye. And tank Carinos. They're on 32. Now that's good. That's good. And let's make these guys a little bit bigger as well. We're going to need 40s. Where we're headed, so. We actually made them. That's good. Um, I know I not convert everyone at this group yet just because we don't have the industry for it yet. But we'll get there. Man, it'd be cool if I could just hold on the I button. And then just, oh, it just pops in infantry. There you go. Not bad. You know what, screw it. You guys will become that group then. There you go. Now we're out of stuff, right? Main battle tanks, artillery. Yeah, we're out of everything. God dang it. It's all right. It's all part of the plan. 5.1 billion. Makes sense. Um, yeah, if you wonder about that one, please go right ahead. We get another military factory, which would be nice. But we need more guns. Go by one for now. Go up to way more arty. Go down to one. Go by, down by one. Mm, we need wait more of this. Plans are looking okay, though. We do have enough manpower, so that's pretty good. Anything here that's important? Good launch military intervention. Portlands are nice, though. Not too bad, not too bad. Expand the bureau and the defense industry. Great. Wait, make way more guns, please. We're looking pretty good, regardless, overall. Seems like poverty will take forever to get rid of, but... Uh, we're gonna do orcs next. Orsk. Alright, all right, that's neutral. Yeah, that's not good, man. <clears throat> Current investment is high, high, high. There you go. Uh, let's stop making these guys in. Goodbye. There you go. Good luck. You're gonna need it. You're really gonna need it. Five. Oh, do we create opponent relations? We are at 50. They're cordial. There you go. Cordial, huh. Now, it's, they're, now they're just aligned. And we gotta do that one too. I really wanna do this stuff, but we just don't have the industry for it. And if you're wondering about investing in machinery, please go right ahead, because I still wanna get down here too. Nice. Yeah. One, two, three, and a half. That's not too bad. And if you're wondering about on the way to recovery, please go right ahead. I want to get that bonus to industry. I want to get a better poverty rate. Just all these things are super, super necessary. So. All right. What are these guys going to do? Are you going to annex them? We're going to influence them? Concurrent frontal waves. Nice. Let's get some of this too. Well, even though it won't matter too much. I think I forgot to do that when I play as Batov. Or Batov. I always say his name wrong. That must be aggressive. And be offensive too. Any upgrades for our generals? No. And you guys also say no. It kind of sucks. It sucks having no PP. It really does. I'll be honest. It really sucks having no PP. And now we're done with the industry part of the French. Oh, assassination. Oh, but Speer. Well, goodbye, Speer. 
Goodbye. <laughs> Gazprom. Defense industry. Actually, how did that hurt us? One, two, three. Oh, almost four. Can we not make any more... Oh, we can make some stuff down here, too. That'd be good. Let's do that, too. Uh, do boop. And get as max out the civvies as much as possible. 6.9%. Too much debt for me, personally. But deficit's not looking very good. Discredit military. I want to increase our... Oh, I can't increase our investments. Yeah, they're probably going to get them, which is fine with us, so... And... Alright, so let's do reaching out first, because then we can get more civvies this way. So, if you want to go about reaching out, please go right ahead. Foreign relations and trade would be very good. Oh, I wonder what interactions we have with America once we have we have Yeltsin now. Keep spending, keep spending. Oh, we could cut military production, but that would hurt our ability to make goods and such, so we don't want to do that. Anti-tank, anti-tank, looking up. If you like to read about this, please go right ahead. Goodbye, poverty. Uh, I got to get rid of this one before. Yeah. Yeah, I think I did. I'm, 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 I might not have, but it's, it's hard to tell. Because I read... Because I basically just played Batov, so I can't even remember what we did now. Maybe we should still read... I'll still read some of the things, but we'll see. No, we're receptive. That's nice. Why is our influence so... Our gain so low? Are they constantly... God dang it. Lowering that? I'm not really sure. Uh, how strong are these guys? I'm going to go to war with them now. I literally might just go to war them. Oh, they don't have that much map. Oh, they have a lot of divisions, but so do we. No, screw it. Why don't we just go to war now? Are we ready for war? Department of Foreign Affairs, if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. And let's do approach the Eagle. It's about time we made friends. Hey, more PP. Finally, thank God. Let's integrate the place. And... Uh, get more construction speed. I would definitely want to do that one, though. All right, I guess... Just... This is going to take too long for me. I'd rather just kill them off. Going fast and leave none alive. Do we have anything else here? Cass? Yes, please. I love Cass. Gotta look, get a little bit of conflict in this episode, right? Don't want to see this stuff. They were useful, but we don't need their uses anymore. Oh, well, I think we could, but I don't really care. Fear and loathing in L.A. If you wonder about that, please go right ahead. But happy 1968, everybody. The time has been overthrown. And once the war begins, I will go ahead and spend more on the military. Oh, come on, we're 49. High relations? Or, or no, our investment is high. And while we are all quite sober. Yay, heavy machinery, finally. Thank God we can get that one at least done. And then if you want to read about show them our worth, please go right ahead. Response from the USA? Uh, thank you, America. What is this? We received a message from Americans and they've accepted our proposal. They've recognized our control over West Siberia and opened to trade relations, finally giving us a reliable partner to trade with. It's been a struggle to trade as we have limited access to the outside world, and our neighbors are not exactly friendly towards trading with us. This should hopefully open up access to more resources for military and civilian goods, as well as improving our standards with Americans. Perhaps we could deepen our ties even more with the future. Thank you, America. How close are we going to war? Uh, we're still integrating that, which is not terrible. Propaganda. I'd love more construction speed, but we're actually doing relatively okay already, but for now. In about a little more than a month, about five weeks, six weeks, so we're actually doing pretty darn okay, I would say, with this stuff. Um, just in case, do this one as well. When you get over there, that's fine. Get some more radar if you need it right now. Doesn't matter to me. If you like to about to improve academic base, please go right ahead. Something to be celebrated. Absolutely. Hmm... There you go, you can do that, it doesn't matter to me. And we'll have this done, and as a core, so we get everything there first, which is very nice. Hey, there we go. Oh, we got a lot more to do here now. Show them our worth, and then we'll do the Grand Russian Army. If you want to build that, please go right ahead. I do apologize, like, I've already read through a lot of these already, so I just don't want to read them again, so. Actually, how where, where are we for this? Uh, oh, about two weeks. We got two weeks left. We should do relatively okay. Our guys obviously are not super great. Some of these good divisions actually are pretty darn good. But let's go and start spending some more money. That's still basically six billion, which isn't bad. And that just means we get to do a lot more stuff more quickly. Actually, we're not even guarding their territory yet. Uh, hmm. We could do that, but if these guys will, these guys might intervene. Eh, send them down here first time. Whatever. They should move pretty quickly. We got enough fuel, hopefully. And let's finish this off with that. 
Go, go, go. You're almost, some of these guys should be down there pretty darn soon. We go to war with Orenburg, which is fine. Uh, there we go. We've got some of the tanks. And the third army marches forward, if you like it about that. I think, yep, this is pretty much the same as normal. Our task has only begun. Great. Establishing uh, Dragonos Connections. Tank Factory, Land Auction. Well, it's too late for that one. So that was my bad. Uh, if you want to read about this, please go ahead and cream the crop. I definitely read this one already. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Are these guys not getting involved, literally? I don't want to move my soldiers around until we, we can get them. What's going on? Oh, okay, so now we can see them. Continue to move into here. Their tanks are not looking very good either. Uh, and we'll get down there. My god, you take forever to get in there, don't you? Wait. We're not at war anymore. What happened? Oh, they joined their sphere. Okay. That's not cool. What the heck? We were ready to... We were already at war. We were doing well. Oh, we got cocked by them. God dang it. Are you kidding me? Those about Zidane has got to die. Early industrial robots are nice. We're going to do some years. Do we really need this? Nah, not really, no. Could, get, could buy some more rubber, so. Could buy one. Cream of the crop, and then, uh, let's do Dragonus Connections. Man, I even spent more money in the military. That's BS. That should not happen. Just because they join a sphere doesn't mean anything. We should still be able to attack them. There we go. Well, look at all the stuff we can do. Man, Boris Yeltsin is not very good right now. If you want to read about this, please go right ahead. With all these events, for the most part, I'll let you just read them out and we'll just keep going on. Determination is half the battle. Yeah, Boris Yeltsin has no PP. It's weird to say, but, like, there's really just not much we can do. It really sucks. There you go. Need that one, too. I spent even more money to do this. And, it, and this gets said, told no. <sighs> That's big sadness. Hopefully, these guys do stuff over here. Well, if you liked about this, there you go. And, green offer him position? Why not? Who needed PP anyways? And what we'll do is, this one tapping the market. Very good. Just so we can keep, and continue increasing all this stuff over here too. Hey, we're running another civvy. That's pretty good. So now we got to wait till 69 to kill them all off. Oh, we can do this one to improve training methods? Yeah, we'll definitely do that one, but it does cost a lot of political power. And army XP that we don't have currently, so. I guess keep training for now. Yeah, I, I don't want peace with these guys. These guys just gotta die. And if you want to read about establishing a consulate, please go ahead. The new consulate. V vic liberal victory in Canada. Not bad, six billion. Not too bad, not too bad. Still could use more uh, population, but hey, better research facilities. We'll get back to the schools eventually. We lose even more political power, because who needed political power, right? Actually, they'll probably attack us pretty harshly, actually. Um, over here, it's not too bad. Uh, what's our gun situation like right now? So we're actually quite out quite a bit. We're, we're out of quite a bit of everything. Oh, boy. Oh, mama. Uh, go to three. Go to th an, uh, the full another line. Um, tanks, we need a, so many more. I don't want to lower this, because I love the cast, but we'll see what happens. And then... Contact Rome. Hopefully by the end of this episode will be a war. Diplomatic success. Great. Time to move into Washington. There we go. So what is this benefit like? Okay, it's not too bad so far. Minus seven and a half consumer goods factories. That's pretty good. The attache. There you go. Military budget boost. Yeah, let's not keep boosting it up for now. Actually, that did give us a little bit more population to work with, but that's all right. We still have 35 divisions, so show a little benefit from these tactics and chance meeting. Making sure the door was locked behind him, Boris Yeltsin waltzed into the fancy bathroom. Having to get out of that boring trade meeting, Yeltsin always remembered to have his contingency vodka bottle for things like this, unfortunately. The bathroom wasn't unoccupied as an aide stood by the sink washing his hands. The two eyes, two met eyes, and the aide looked down at the bottle of vodka Yeltsin was holding, or, um, 
Yeltsin stuttered, unable to speak much English. Not exactly knowing how to get out of this one, Yeltsin shrugged, smiled, and produced a second shot glass. The aide looked at the glass, appearing to debate on whether to take up on Yeltsin's offer. He poured the vodka into the glasses, and the aide, seemingly made up his mind, picked up the shot glass and said, and smiled and said cheers, he said, before downing the glass. A few shots later, and the two went back to the trade conference, the aide sitting down next to the senator representing the Americans at the meeting. The necessary papers had finally arrived, so the time came to sign the dozen or so pages in front of Yeltsin. Finishing with the fourth page, Yeltsin heard the senator say something in English to his translator. So, Senator Fulbright wants to ask how many shots his aide got before giving up, Mr. Yeltsin. A uh, red-faced Boris sheepishly gave his response to his translator, too, and they weren't filled to the brim either. The senator broke out in a laughter and spoke to his translator again. Next time you go out for a drink with my boy Bill Clinton here, have him make me proud by drinking four like a real man. <laughs> sure will, but not in a bathroom next time. Oh my goodness, that's funny. That's pretty good. Awesome. Well, I'm just ready for war. I don't know about you guys, but I am ready to kick some Zidane of booty. And it should be kicked as we're using really bad arty. Oh my goodness. Serbia sides with Italia, Czech Germany. And we will set to Scandinavia. Hopefully, not, hopefully we'll do well here. Alright. Hey, look at that. Pretty good. There's still a lot of support here. How are we doing for this stuff? Primary schooling, research facilities, agriculture's halfway there, poverty rate is looking slightly better, industrial expertise will probably improve. Hey, if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. Awesome. Oil expertise? Yes, please. And uh, help out poverty if we possibly can. Poverty relief. Or this one. Uh, I like the other one because you get slightly more GDP growth, so. So now it's 6.9. It would go up to probably like 7.2 or something like that. Not too bad. Our deficit isn't still too bad either, so. And we're still training our guys, which is nice. And there goes Orenberg. God dang it. Well, let's make sure our guys are actually all ready to go. There we go. If anything, I really don't want to fight in the mountains, so I'm not really sure where we could do it. Probably like right here. It's probably the best area to stretch. Just bang, like that. There we go. So we're missing a lot of equipment. A lot of tanks are missing, but we're actually not doing too bad on them. Artillery's looking better too, and we've got actually plenty of guns. For now. <laughs> For now. And then into the world. Hey, get 100 more political power. Please, 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 please. Oh my goodness. Oh, we have some dockyards too. Look at that. And we'll grab some convoys. Not too shabby. Basic motorized. We could probably go down to one, honestly. Plenty of guns. Keep it down to five then. Actually, we're doing quite fine on that stuff. Yeah, we need more RD is super, super important. So, uh, for all this stuff, uh, this one's actually kind of worthless for us now. But we wanted that one, so an end to outdated tactics. There you go, if you'd like to read about that. I think that would be quite good. Quite, quite bueno. <clears throat> Into the world, it'd be very nice. Yeah, we get more political power, stability, and popularity of conservative democracy. It, I, it's kind of good that we can wait till 69 to get a war started, but even then it's kind of like, sometimes, do we have to wait for that long? Unfortunately, the answer is yes. Higher and foreign structures, that'd be good. And you know what, let's, we'll probably wait till the next episode to go to war with good old Zidana. So, if you want to beat, read about all these... I'll let you go ahead and read about them. There we go. Centralized Command. The Shield of the People. Mechanized Troop Training. Legacy of the Third Army. This one as well. The Quality Materials. Rokosowski Military Academy. Expertise of the Taust. The Factories of Tumem. Revolutionary Designs. Airfields. Eyes Inside the Machine. As well as Invincible and Legendary. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we will see what happens when Boris Yeltsin unifies the entirety of Russia, minus Muscovy. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.